What if John Scott was actually 99 overall? Now that is right, I wanted to do a scenario because of the Hut card that just came out. I'll be doing a scenario that basically is all for fun. It's not serious whatsoever. It's just, what if John Scott was actually 99 overall? And I, I think this is going to be a whole lot of fun. And unfortunately, I have to do it with Montreal. I don't want to do it with Montreal. I'd rather have him on San Jose or Arizona. Uh, but that's the team that he's on currently. And it, it'll just have to be like that. So... Let's get right into this. I actually have to call him up from the minors. As you see at the bottom there, it's Carey Price, P.K. Subban, and then Max Pacioretty as their top players, only because they do not have John Scott up on the team. So let's go ahead and call him up from the minors. There he is. 99 overall, John Scott. I want to show him off to you. He's still an enforcer. He's not a sniper or anything like that, but every single stat is 99 overall. Uh, I guess we got to uh, send somebody down then while we call them up because they have too many players on the roster. Let's go ahead and send down to no. There we go. Confirm. All right, let's go to edit lines. Best lines. All right, so John Scott. Oh, okay, no, I want best lines. Best lines. All right, I guess... Pacioretty and Galchenyuk are staying together. Uh, they want David DeHarnay on the first line with John Scott instead of with Brendan Gallagher. Uh, I don't, no, I don't. I want Pacioretty up there. I feel like that that'll lead to the best the best team. And then Placanics up there. There we go. That's how I want it. John Scott up there with Galchenyuk and Pacioretty. And let's just go ahead and simulate this season. I don't really have too much to say about John Scott, except uh, the whole scenario with him in the All-Star game. Uh, if you weren't rooting for him during the All-Star game, then there's something wrong with you. The way the NHL handled that situation, it was absolutely terrible. And just the attitude that John Scott had throughout the entire time, it was absolutely great. Even... Even now, I mean, he's just so humble as a guy that if this were to happen to anybody else, I'm not sure we'd have the same outcome. Like if this was, if this happened to, hell, I don't know, Paul Bissonette. He's the only enforcer I can really think of. Uh, I don't know, if this, maybe George Peros, I guess. I don't know, if this had happened to literally anybody else, doesn't matter if they're an enforcer or not. I really don't think that it would have it would have been this the same. John Scott is such a humble guy. Uh, he, he's got just a great personality. He's a great great addition to any team's locker room. While I agree with Jeremy Roenick, and that rarely ever gets said, I agree with him saying that he really shouldn't be on an NHL team. He doesn't by the fact that he doesn't have enough skill to be on the NHL team. Uh, let me clarify that one. He doesn't. He definitely doesn't have as much skill as even bottom line guys on Toronto. It, it's just not there. That's not why he became a professional hockey player. The reason why he's a pro professional hockey player is his fists. It, it's, our, it's... I feel bad saying it. I'm sorry for saying that, but it's the truth, and it really sucks. And let's just go ahead and stop this because it's just, it's not moving. There we go. Let's just go ahead and finish up the season. I'll take a look at points at the end of the season, but it, it really just sucks that he probably will never play in the NHL again, especially with the way the direction the league is heading. It used to be, uh, uh, you have to have at least one enforcer, if not, you have an entire line that you can send out there to rough up the other team. And it sucks that it, enforcers aren't needed anymore. Personally, I love fighting in the game of hockey. If you're an enforcer, you're accepting all the risks that come with that. I don't really think that we should 
say, oh, fighting needs to be out of the game. I think it adds a new dynamic because if each team has guys that uh, you know would fuck you up if you mess with the other star player, that's going to take away cheap shots. And we've seen a whole lot of them start happening in recent times. And I really think that just knowing that somebody would, somebody who's, who gets paid to do that, I think it'd be really good for teams to have. And yes, I know all the risk with concussions and stuff like that. They're not actually hockey players. You get more talent out of it. But then there's guys like Lucic who can sit there and be mildly talented at the game and then just be a goon as well. It just kind of ruins the game in my in my opinion. That having an, a dedicated enforcer on every team would be a little, a little more useful. And let's take a look at points here. John Scott was 68. He led the team. He actually had his penalty minutes down. Uh, surprisingly, for an enforcer, yes, he has really good discipline. But I thought an enforcer, he would have over 100 easily. Uh, only 68 points on the season, though. Uh, it's not too good, but you know what? He's on Montreal, which they were not a playoff team in real life, so even them making the playoffs now, which they were a second seed in the division, so it's pretty good for them to make the playoffs. And how John Scott compares to the rest of the people, yeah, he's quite a ways down there. Uh, where's he? he? He had the same amount of points as Kucherov, Marion Hossa, so... Uh, not not a bad season for 99 overall, John Scott. <laughs> uh, like I said, John Scott's a great guy. Uh, he deserved everything that happened to him over the All Star weekend. The way the players accepted him, it was absolutely fantastic. And like I said, it sucks that he's not really gonna have a spot in the league anymore. And I really I really do think that enforcers should have a place in hockey, but maybe not in the same way, I guess. Uh, if every team had a Lucic, I guess players wouldn't be able to get away with what they're able to get away with. Or even Matt Cook to an, to an extent, even though he's not the most talented hockey player. Uh, if, every, if every team had one of those, or even a guy like Corey Perry, I guess, who's really talented, but he'll also drop the gloves and... and He's a strong player. He'll he has some cheap shots here and there. I really don't like Anaheim, or maybe even Ryan Getzlaff. I guess uh, if teams had more of those, I feel like it'd be a little more a little more balanced. You'd see more talent instead of uh, cheap shots like you're starting to see more of. Here's a playoff tree. We lost in seven games to Ottawa. Uh, yeah, they just they couldn't win. But Washington wins the cup, and yeah, well this is I think. A 99 overall, John Scott would be absolutely great in the game. I think with his size being 6'8", uh, just imagine, uh, just imagine Chara in his prime. Uh, that'd be more John Scott or uh, a Rick Nash. A Rick Nash in his prime, I feel like, is a good comparison. I feel like that's what John Scott could do if he was actually that talented in real life. Uh, but this is what NHL 16 thinks, so. Very good season for John Scott, 68 points. Uh, he's a great player, and it kind of sucks what's happening, but uh, what can you do? The game is evolving, and that's what happens, but that'll be all for now. If you guys like this, uh, these little fun scenarios, not always a serious or realistic one, uh, just let me know down in the comments. Uh, I, I love reading the comments, so if you guys like this, let me know, and uh, I'll see you next time.